Hello, viewer. My name is Ilene Ohome from the Church of Convent Valley Road, and this is Science Hub. And today, I'm with my colleague. I'm Lara Mbithi. I'm also in Form 4, the Church of Convent Valley Road. So today, we're talking about organic chemistry. Organic chemistry, too. So detergents is basically the last part of organic chemistry, too, where we see that a detergent is a chemical substance which is added to water in order to ease and cleaning. So we have two types of detergents. We have soapy detergent and we have soapless detergent. Basic examples are, for example, whatever the soap we use to shower or to wash dishes in the house, that's an example of a soapy detergent. But the powder, the omos and whatever powder you use in the house is an example of a soapless detergent. So um, we're going to prepare a soapy detergent. Um, before the preparation of the soapy, de of the soapy detergents and softness, first of all, um, you need to know the definition of a detergent. A detergent, so when someone asks you what the definition of a detergent is, you simply say, a detergent is a substance which is added to water to improve its cleaning properties. So that's what you, that's what you see when you put your clothes in water without soap. What happens? Like, they won't be clean, so you have to add soap so that it can be clean. So now, let's move to the preparation. So, to prepare, we are going to take a 10 cubic centimeters of water. We are going to measure with a measuring cylinder. So we've measured 10, and then we place it in a beaker. Then we're going to add 40 cubic centimeters of sodium hydroxide. So we're going to add this into the beaker. And then we're going to heat. Before we heat, we're going to put 10 centimeters of oil. This is vegetable oil. Make sure your eyes are below the name skirts. Add the oil into the sodium hydroxide. Then we transfer the mixture into a glass beaker so that we can be able to boil it. Heat the mixture while we stir as you continue adding small amounts of distilled water. I'm going to stir the mixture as we add a small amount of distilled water.
Okay, as she does that, basically what we're going to observe is that the fat and the sodium hydroxide are going to react to form a soap and glycerol. So we're going to remove the glycerol by adding sodium chloride, which the process is called salting out. So we are going to let the mixture to heat. As you can see, the solution is now white. So let me just take you through the procedure once more. What we've done is that we've added fat plus sodium hydroxide into the beaker and now we're warming it. Then when they react, they're going to form soap plus glycerol. So as to remove the glycerol because all we want is the soap, we're going to add sodium chloride and that process is called salting out. And preparing of soap is known as saponification. Terms. as she continues to stir and wait for a result. So we're going to add sodium chloride to the mixture. I'm um, going to add a small amount of sodium chloride and then to stir the mixture and then you allow the mixture to cool down. But now it's still hot. Yeah. But when it cools down, it's going to form two layers. The layer of the glycerol and the layer of the soup. So we're supposed to distill it so as to remove the layer of the glycerol and remain with soup. So the general essence of this experiment is that um, fat plus sodium plus sodium hydroxide should give you soap plus glycerol. Yes. So we are going to move to the representation of a soapy detergent. A soapy detergent is, be basic is basically R C This is the, the carboxyl group, then this is the methyl. So when you're forming um a soapy detergent, for example, using ethanol, R, we're going to replace the R with the structure of ethanol, then the carboxyl group, then sodium. So we are going to move to the, before we move to that, um, this oxygen has a negative charge, so this part of the chemical equation is known as the polar L, and this side is known as the nonpolar end. So while cleaning, this nonpolar end from here onwards combines the dirt, which is an organic compound, to form missiles. That's how it missiles. And then this polar end repels the missiles, therefore removing the dirt out of the clothes, out of your body. So next we are going to go to soapless detergents. Take us to soapless detergents, please. So <coughs> soapless detergent is prepared through the action of 
conch sulfuric acid on, on oil and sodium hydroxide. It's basically um when you add oil plus sodium hydroxide, you just add just add so just add conch sulfuric acid to give you a soapless detergent. So <clears throat> you're going to notice that when you add sorry, first of all, um to prepare a soapless detergent, you put um you add 10 cubic centimeters of oil to conch sulfuric acid while stirring. You're going to notice that there's a thick brown liquid which is going to be formed. And then you add sodium hydroxide to the thick brown liquid to form a soapless detergent. And that's how you get it. So the procedure is kind of different from <coughs> the one for preparing a, soapless, a soapy detergent. In that, in a soapy detergent, you first add conch sulfuric acid to the oil and then you start the mixture you're going to get a thick brown liquid and then you add sodium hydroxide to get a surplus detergent so we're going to go to the mode of cleaning of a surplus detergent which my colleague is going to take you through um, before i show the mode of cleaning i'm going to show an example of how a surplus detergent looks like so we have a which has been told is is the part of the soil, which is the other part of an alkanoic acid, apart from now the carboxylic rock. So we have R, and then we have this structure, and then we have S O. And we have O S O. So um, the same thing happens here. So this part is the non-polar end, and this part is the polar end. So this is my polar end. That's what the soapless detergent did. What the soapy detergent did. It's going to combine with the dirt, and then the polar end is going to repel it. So the difference between these two, apart from the name being soapy and surplus, is that. The repelling of the dirt here is not as efficient as here. So here, the clothes will be left dazzling white, but here we will be left with some stains, which are some of the dirt that refuse to leave the cloth. Yes, and she's going to continue telling us about commercial surplus detergents. Okay, so... Quickly, I'm going to say the difference between surplus and soapy. So... Surplus is very soluble in water, while soapy is not. Surplus causes water pollution, while soapy doesn't. And surplus is expensive, and soapy is cheap. So next, we are going to polymers. A polymer is a large molecule formed by combining small molecules at high temperature and pressure. So an example of a polymer is the most common example that almost everyone knows. Polyfilm, but actually it's polyfilm. Polyfilm. It's made from combining many ethylene molecules together and making polyfilm, commonly known as polyfilm. So we have two types of polymerization, which is going to take us through. We have additional and condensation. No, condensation, polymerization. So, we're going to start with additional polymerization. It is when two monomers combine to form one polymer. For example, if you're given ethene, you remember ethene in organic chemistry 1 has a structure C So, this is the simple, simple structure of ethene. So, it combines, you don't know the definite number of ethenes that combine to form polyethene. So, we are just going to use N to show the number of ethenes that combine. And then, they will form...
they combine to form this structure called collagen. Collagen, yeah. So there are also other examples, like for example, polypropin, which is a fabric. So I'll take you quickly through the structure of polypropin. The structure of polypropin is C. Then um C. So polypropin is basically from when you put many propins together and then make polypropin. So the prefix poly means many together. Yeah, C H T C H T. This is the simple structure of of polypropin. Sorry, this was supposed to be H and C H T. It is formed by combining two compounds of propene. So, for example, now this is propene C, 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 H, 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 H. So this is this is propene. It called, two of them combined to form polypropene, which is this, which are two, yeah? So, um, we go to polychloroethene, which is going to take you through. So, <coughs> polychloroethene is commonly known as PVC, like PVC pipes, PVC carpets. So, Ethene, which has two carbons. Reacts with chloride. So this is the basic structure of how poly polyethene polychloroethene looks like. Next, we're going to look at uh, polytetrafluoroethene, which is, has almost the same thing. So this is basically what happens. These lines mean that there's a continuation, that the chain continues, and the number is not known. And the N kept here signifies the number of, ch of structures that are in each chain. Next, we go to power pets, which is mostly used for making glass in laboratory, which is, for example, this one. This is artificial glass, it's known as power pets. It's not as fragile as glass, but it looks like glass, so it's known as artificial glass. Next, we go to condensation, polymerization, which is going to take us through. So, um, in conditional polymerization, Identical or different monomers combine to form one polymer with lots of small molecules like that of water, ammonia, and everything. Yeah? So, um, we, we are going to look at starch, which is a polymer. So, glucose molecules go through condition polymerization and they lose water molecules. So, the glucose condense. And lose, they lose water and become starch, which is a polymer. What is oxygen? Oxygen is four. It's four H plus. H O. Okay, the same thing that you need to begin. Yes. So this one and this one combine. So um, you're going to see that this 
or H. This um what is it called? Um hydroxide hydroxide group um combined with this hydrogen to form water. So as they combine, you're going to see that um a starch polymer is going to be formed when this hydroxide and this hydroxide combine. So the general structure will be this one plus this one, yeah. Next, you're going to move to uh, proteins, which has different functional groups. Starch has the same functional group, as you can see. The structure is the same, glucose. And then you're going to move to proteins, which has different functional groups, which my colleague is going to take you through. So proteins are made up of amino acids, which, co which go through condensation, polymerization, to form the proteins. So for example, how you identify a protein is when you see nitrogen as one of the elements. So we have nitrogen, carbon, Due to this, you see that this is a protein being formed. So this plus another one that looks exactly like this. Let's see. The same thing happens. They lose water as for this one, this one lost the OH, this one lost the H. Same thing is going to happen. So it's going to lose the OH and then it's going to lose the OH. So it's going to lose the H. So this is going to combine with this and form a protein molecule, which is written as. So this is a protein molecule. So next we're going to look at that from here. That's a protein molecule. So there are also other compounds being formed like nylon 66, rubber. Um, there are also polymers formed through different monomers. So we are going to move to advantages of synthetic polymers and fibers. One, they are less affected by alkalized acids and water, water and air, and they are lighter compared to the other ones, and they are stronger, and they can be molded into desired shapes easily, like the PVC pipes, they can be molded into shapes. Then they are less expensive, and we move to the disadvantages. They are very expensive, and they do not decompose easily compared to the non-synthetic fibers. And some synthetic fibers give give up give off some poisonous gases when they burn. These gases they pollute the atmosphere. Yeah. Then we go to the uses of polymers. For example, polythene is used in film wrappers, flexible bottles, and electrical wire insulators and water pipes. Polypropene is used 
has very many uses like in, in crates, carpets, plastic bottles, chairs and ropes. So um, they have so many uses. Also perspex is used as a substitute for glass as we have seen. This is perspex. So, so um, we come to the end of our discussion. That was Organic Chemistry 2. And I'm um, Elaine Mahome from Form 4, and this is my colleague, Lara Mbithi, also in Form 4 from Loreto Convent Valley Road. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you.